a tough uh, town. It's inc- they got, uh, you know, homeless guys everywhere you look, you know? Yeah. And that's tough. It breaks your heart, you know? Yeah. And uh, I seen one guy there the other day in New York, a homeless guy, had a uh, dog with him, you know? Yeah. And that's tough. You feel sorry for the, for the dog, you know? I mean... <laughs> right. You know, the dog's not thrilled with the deal as he's got a homeless guy, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, uh... It's bad yeah. enough when the dog doesn't have a house. Right, now he's... <laughs> you know, he's going, hey, I can do this by myself. I don't need a goddamn... Right. You know? It's like the longest walk in the world of the dog, you know? He's... <laughs> Just waiting. Well, why don't we take a break, and then we'll uh, come back, and we'll uh, talk some more. You want to do that? Yeah, that's great. Okay, you're just hilarious. We'll be right back. (laughs) Here's an odd exchange I heard one time. You know when you just walk by and you hear a snippet of conversation? Yeah. So there was these two homeless dudes. This was in in, uh, New York City. Two homeless dudes sitting beside each other. And uh, can I swear and you can just bleep it out? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so two homeless dudes were sitting beside each other. And I was just walking by and the, and they were sitting beside each other. And the one homeless guy said to the other guy, he goes, when the f*** will you have a goaltender for the Montreal Canadiens? <laughs> <laughs> He'd finally had enough of this guy's horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> Norm McDonald, uh, thank you for making us laugh. And, oh, thank uh, you, man. This and is awesome. Right in town. You ever hear of the Bowery? Yeah. Heard the, yeah. You know that place, right? Sure, yeah. I've heard and, of it. Yeah, it's Skid Row. Mm-hmm. And so there's all these homeless bums on the street and everything like that. Yeah. And you have to go through it. To, so I went to this club, and I bombed. They hated my guts, so I was all mad. You know, I get mad when I don't do good. And then, so I went out of the thing, you know, I walked out. You walk like that, really? Yes. <laughs> You've got that problem, I remember. <laughs> uh-huh. So I walk out of the club. So I get out, and uh, this homeless guy, you know, this bum, he starts walking beside me, bugging me, you know, hey. You're not supposed to call them bums anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Hobo, you know? <laughs> so, a tramp. A tramp. A tramp. Yeah. Okay, riding the rails. Yeah, right. just a layabout. And he's, he's like coming up to me, and he's like bugging me. I want money. They always want money, you know? <laughs> yeah. They never have money, you know? So. <laughs> the problem with them hobos, yeah. yeah. So they're like, hey, give me some money, give me some money. And, he, you know, they, sometimes they'll walk with you. So I said, look, man, I said, I'm going to give you some money if you just go away. I'm mad at him, you know? I was mm-hmm. mad. I go, here. And I go, so I pull in my pocket and I just give him a bunch of money, like change, you know? Yeah, I yeah. Give it to him. I go, go on, get out of here, you dirty bum, you know? So <laughs> he goes away. So then I go to get the subway, you know? Uh-huh. And uh, I look at my pocket. I've given the guy, I don't have my token, my subway token. Oh, you gave it away yeah. accidentally. And I don't have a wallet or anything, so I was thinking I was going to try to jump the thing, mm-hmm. but uh, at that then, you know, I get in trouble for that. So I, uh, I said, I got to find that bum, that homeless bum, you know? Uh-huh. So I have to go back, and I'm walking back the street, and there's all homeless bums, they're all lying there in the street. Yeah. And I don't know which one is which, I can't remember. So I'm like lifting up guys' hats and stuff, you know, and looking under newspapers. Uh-huh. So finally I find this character, I go, hey, you, I go, give me some of that money back, you know? And uh, he's like, no, go away. He's turned mean, you know, because I was mean to him earlier. He goes, ah, get out. This is like know? a biblical tale. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the New Testament. All right, go so ahead. I, you know, I felt sorry for him. He had no place. And so uh, I go, okay, forget about it. And I go to turn around. And then I grab his cup, like, real quick, and I start running. <laughs> I like how your, your running is like walking, just turned up like 10 right, degrees. Right. Okay. So it was great. I got, and, and, and then I felt bad, though, because uh, when I looked through, I had like a, uh, about a buck more than I gave him. You know? Oh, that's not right. That's not right at all. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Well, sometimes they say if you give, you'll receive more in return. That's the sweetest story I've ever heard. Yeah. I'm all choked up now. Now, I heard also you've been, uh, you did a little cross. probably just down on his luck. Yeah, that's what, that's what happens. <laughs> Why'd you feel you had to throw that in? I don't know, you know. Uh, holiday spirit, are you a kind of guy that gets... You know, I try feeling? to do something nice, you know? You like, you ever try to do something nice? No. Oh. <laughs> it's not my style, Norm. <laughs> but, uh, I was, uh, it was Christmas in New York, you know, and I was alone. So anyways, I went, there was a, a, a diner that I always go to near my house. Mm-hmm. It's a really nice diner. And, uh, so I went there and there was this homeless bum there, you know? <laughs> Just say a homeless guy. It's not politically correct to say bum. But I can't even say homeless bum. No, I thought they didn't like to be called bums. Yeah, I, right. A homeless, homeless guy, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, so, okay. 
There is a... I'm not going to let you get to this story. I'm just going to keep giving you a hard time no. about bums. You meet, a, you meet a bum, a hobo, a tramp. A tramp, yeah. He had a little stick with a thing on it. Okay. He was from the 1930s. Yeah, okay. And uh, so he says to me, he says, uh, uh, can I get some, uh, some money off you? I don't like giving the homeless bums money. I'll tell you why. Because I figure they'll do the crack. <laughs> right? They'll, they'll, they'll do the crack. Yeah, okay. my, dad, my, my mom says never give a homeless bums money because they'll go do the crack. One. So I said, okay. I said, I don't want to give this guy money. He'll go to the guy. I said, why don't I just get, bring you in the diner, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll get you a meal. I'll buy you a meal. It's Christmas, you know, it'll be uh -huh. nice. So uh, the guy goes, okay. So we go in the diner and we order, you know, the, the meal. And this guy just keeps ordering food, you know, <laughs> like he's really hungry. Yeah. And, uh, so he orders and orders and orders, and I'm like, well, you know, you got to be nice, got to the, you know, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And uh, so I, I, I order, like, a soup or something, and then uh, all of a sudden, like, this unbearable stench comes off the guy, huge stench. Really? It smelled like, like, uh, like, like... That's, that's okay. <laughs> anyway, so... I don't know what the smell was, but yeah, uh -huh. it was like, I don't know, it was like human waste or something, you know? And it seemed to be coming from the guy's, like, trousers. Norm, so I whole... said that's okay. Okay, okay. I okay. was like, the stench yeah, is right. enough. We all yeah. can do the rest in our heads. Yeah. So this stench fills the diner, right? So I have to go to this diner, right? So everybody's looking at me like, what the hell did you bring a homeless bum in the diner for? <laughs> With a stench, you know? So I'm like, oh, I'm trying to eat my soup. I can't even eat it. And I'm wishing I'd, I'm wishing I'd bought this guy crack. I wish I'd got, you know what I mean? I wish I'd gone, found some crack and bought it for the guy. So uh, anyway, and everybody hates me. The guy that, you know, I have to go there every day. And so then the, the end of the meal comes. This guy's ordered everything. And I'm looking at my wallet. I only have like 28 bucks. It was like 31 bucks. Uh -huh. I was a soup. Uh -huh. And so uh, now basically we're two homeless bums, you know? Neither of us so I go, look, buddy, and he's been, he's been jabbering uh -huh. about Rockefeller. Is that Rockefeller's funeral? I don't know what he was talking about. And I go, look, buddy, you got to come up with something here. You know? <laughs> Kick in some. <laughs> you want him to... Yeah, yeah it's only fair. He gave almost everything. I had a soup. He was having a hamburger. So the guy goes in his pocket, and, and then I, you know, I didn't want him to... I didn't... Who God knows what he has in his pocket, right? But he had some uh, some coins, and they were all gross, and they were like some of them were black. Anyway, that's my Christmas story. <laughs> I love me a Norm story. One time we were in the office uh, doing update stuff, and and uh, uh, there was there had been a news item about uh, there was going to be a newspaper for the homeless. <laughs> You know, and so we were thinking about doing some of that. So we started improvising. It was more of a scene, not something we could do on, on mm -hmm. the segment, but it was like uh, like a tough kind of Perry White kind of editor going like, you, Miller, I want 500 words on going to the bathroom in your pants. You, uh, you know, uh, Emil, give me something. Uh, give me a human interest thing on here and stay back. You, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And like a lot of, lot of like photos, maybe some, you know, a little human side, you know. Uh, what are, you know, pets, that kind of thing. And so nothing came of it, and, and I sort of forgot we had the conversation and then the first meeting we have after the summer uh norm comes to me and goes hey, hey downy remember that uh you know that thing we are talking about there with the uh remember that, that thing with the newspaper for the homeless you know that thing the homeless newspaper and i go yeah yeah he goes yeah well you know i was out in la and i i was asked to do this benefit you know for the coalition to uh, feed the homeless or something, you know? and uh you know I, I and i'm going no no you no <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I I did that bit, you know. They hated it. <laughs> they hated it. All right, you tell me now. He that's part of the that's the Andy Kaufman part of the joke, or did, is yeah. he actually surprised that they hated it? That's what I can't quite figure with look. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I took a homeless guy. So I'm going to take you to this diner that I always go to. So I go there with him, you know, into this diner, yeah. sit down uh, to get me a meal. Good God, if the guy, uh, the, the unbearable stench of urine starts coming off this guy. So nobody wants that in a restaurant. You no, know? you don't. You don't want that. So I'm like, all right. Everybody's like trying to eat, you know. So the guy orders this food, and I'm trying to talk to him. He starts telling me about how this is his idea of a conversation, this guy. He starts telling me about how uh, Governor Rockefeller is poisoning the pigeons. Right in the city. 
So I told this guy, I go, what are you, retarded? I said, Governor Rockefeller, I said, the governor of this state is Pataki, Governor Pataki. He says, no, no, you know, huh. he talked weird. He was like, huh, the, the pigeon. He says, the pigeons are the cleanest animal you ever seen. I go, I'm not arguing with you, buddy, but I'm telling you, the governor's name is Pataki. <laughs> That's unbelievable. He's crazy. He wasn't turned out he wasn't retarded. He was, you know, woo. It's, well, but what's the fun for you in giving a homeless guy a spraying a handful of quarters and watching him dodge in and out of traffic? <laughs> no, <but> I, <laughs> I'm saying there's... Uh, that <laughs> ain't question answers itself. Uncle Hector. Uncle Hector... He's Polish, too, I'm guessing. No, he wasn't Polish. Oh, okay. No, he was from my uh, cousin's side of the family. And he was... Uh, he was, uh, he was a great man, my uncle, you know. Right. Uh, he uh, was an old fella. He, he actually... Uh, uh, rode the rails during the depression. Oh, you know, he's a hobo. Hobo, as you might uh, call him. I yeah. don't like that term. But whatever. <laughs> tramp or whatever. Yeah, what have tramp, you? Railroad bum. <laughs> and, uh, but he wasn't a bum. He was just out. He was a good, honest man during the depression, searching for work. Yeah. You know? yeah. And you know, he had no money, so he'd travel the country trying to find work, and he actually rode the rails, mm -hmm. Uncle Hector. And uh, and uh, he told me uh, it was an interesting story. He'd go through. This was in Canada, and uh, there's a, a town called Kitchener in Canada, mm -hmm. and the railroad cops were tough, boy. They were Ooh. tougher, tougher yeah. than the real cops, you know. They had a law of their own, the railroad cops. <laughs> I feel like I should be tucked into bed listening to you. <laughs> anyway, a law of their own, those railroad yeah. cops. But there was not a railroad cop tougher than Kitchener Leslie. Oh, boy. He was well known. <laughs> He was well known for beating hobos to death. Really? Oh, He'd yeah. find a hobo on his train, he beat him to death. He'd beat him to death. And uh, so what the, uh, the railroad bums would all do is, as Kitchener approached, of course... Oh, hey, I'll, hey, Norm, how you doing? So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, such focus on these stories. That wasn't a mirror, that was... A, okay, that oh, was a guy named Norm. Yeah, so uh, 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 the railroad bums would all, see, hop off before they got to Kitchener right. to avoid being beaten to death by Kitchener Leslie. Yeah. Anyways, my, uh, my uh, Uncle Hector, a good man, you know, and he, he walked into a mine one day. This is a, a story for the, uh, that they think the young people could learn from. He, <laughs> this is yeah, during, don't go mine hopping, kids. Dur during the height of the Depression, where there was absolutely no work, my Uncle Hector walked into, to a, uh, I won't say the name of the mining company, it was McIntyre Mine. <laughs> and he and he walked in. He had his he had his lunchbox with him and his uh -huh. his his uh, work boots. And he said, "Sir," he said, uh, "I want a job." And they said, "We have no jobs." He said, "Well, 500 people work here at McIntyre Mine." He goes, uh, "I don't think there are 500 men here better than I." Uh, he says, "As a matter of fact, I don't think there are 200 men better than I." He says, "I I think you'd be uh, strapped to find 100 men better than I." And by golly, he got the job. What do that's, you think of that? That's a great story. Now, I'm sensing there's more. Now, back to Kitchener Leslie, yeah, the no, most dreaded. Oh, no, no, no. Uncle Hector. Uncle Hector. What? No. I'm sorry. I'm Hector. trying to help you out. No, Uncle Hector. Dad, where's the story going? Uncle, Uncle Hector uh, worked in a mine, and it's, yeah. a, it's a hellish job, the mine, as you well know. Uh, you know, uh, darkness, you know. <laughs> it's dank. It's, it's dank. Yeah. It's it's coaly. It's a lot of what? Well, oh, you're in a coal mine. It's you not get... coaly. It's coal ridden. It's coal, coal ridden. infested. It's, it's not coaly. It's coal infested. So uh, so he worked in the mine, and by God, he worked hard. And uh, after a week of working hard, he said to the the shift manager, he said, "Where?" He said, "By golly, I'd like to have a lady. I work hard, and, and, and uh, where would I find a where would I find a lady here in town?" Well, they said to Uncle Hector, they says. Uh, uh, we don't have, uh, we have sex with animals here. <laughs> By God, says Uncle Hector, I'm not going to do that. I, why, I'm a, a normal fella. Uh, well, that, then uh, be uh, to your own devices then. So, <laughs> uh, Uncle, be to your own devices? Yeah. Wow. Uncle, Uncle Hector continued working in the mine. He worked hard and he worked long and he worked for a low wage. But he was a man. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And Uncle Hector, after a couple of weeks passed, he, he started to get a little itch, you know, as, as you and I say. Right. You know, he, 
Right, right. When we're, when we're thinking about the the ladies, the ladies, know? yeah. And, uh, but he kept it under control. He went again. And he said, "Are you sure there's no ladies here? No, we have sex with animals." Ah, oh, my God. <laughs> six, six months passed, and Uncle Hector couldn't take it any longer. He told me. Right. He said, "By God, I just had to. Uh, I, I'm just a man. I'm weak, you know. I'm I'm not a saint, uh, you know. And uh, I, I was I was born in sin, I suppose, and I I, I couldn't resist." I just needed it, so he, so he said he walked uh, by a, a pasture, and there there was a pig. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. And uh, so Uncle Hector said, "Well, uh, he he said I walked up and I I began having sex with a pig." <laughs> and he said, uh, all of a sudden he saw all the miners like around him, you know, looking at him. They go, Uncle Hector, oh, what the hell are you doing over there? And Uncle Hector's like indignant. He's like, what? Well, you, you're the guys that told me that, uh, that uh, you have sex with animals. They're like, Uncle Hector, you damn fool. That's Kitchener Leslie's girlfriend. <laughs> of all the animals. Of all the animals to have sex they, with. You don't want to. And not with Kitchener Leslie's pig. No, that's terrible. Not Kitchener Leslie's pig. Kitchener Leslie's lady. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, I screwed up. What do we do now? Hey, homeless guys, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a dollar each if you go into this building here and run around yelling and screaming. Uh, you know, that's very nice, but I think what you probably need are, like, some psycho, out-of-control homeless guys. Yeah, we're more the broken, spiritless, I've-lost-the-will-to-live type homeless guys. How about for two dollars? <laughs> Pleasant surprise. Yeah, where's our money? What money? You owe us fifty thousand dollars for getting the building at 99 Franklin Street condemned. We want it now. But Mitch, I don't even own the building at 99 Franklin. Well, I told you I did, but I lied. Good luck trying to prove it. Son of a bitch. You see, once you stopped my bulldozer from leveling that old lady's house, I couldn't just let you get away with it. So I figured out a way for you to help me and hurt you at the same time. I guess I showed you guys a thing or two about dirty work. Yeah, whatever. But we're not leaving here till we get our 50 grand. <laughs> and then when you jumped on that security guard's back and you were yelling in his ear, a CIA put a chip in my brain. Man, I, I was laughing so hard, I almost shit my pants. <laughs> almost? <laughs> I read books on the Great Depression, mm -hmm. and they seem cool. But I would like to, it would be fun to go, ah, I don't even like my wife anyway, and I don't got no money, I'll just get a stick and a pouch and head out. No one does that anymore. No one, no one ties a rag to a stick anymore. And what, what are you, 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 you going to do? You're, yeah. you're going to find a partner is what you're going to do pretty quick if you value your life. Really? <laughs> yeah. gonna get... You see, people, it's all going to be different once the Great Depression, because my dad used to tell me about the Great Depression. Like, if I had money to invest in right now, you know what I would invest in? What's Guys that? jumping off the top of buildings. <laughs> you you think, think that's not going to happen, but soon that's going to be very big. Uh -huh. And then those guys won't be powerful anymore because most of them will be dead and, and the rest severely crippled. <laughs> and so the powerful guys will be the old hobos. The hobos, the hobos from olden times? From the original depression. Oh, okay. Those guys are still around? Some of them never gave up the life. <laughs> okay. and, they, and they use that stick for more than carrying a, a pouch on, I'll tell you that. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what that means is they'll drive your head, uh, they'll, like, an overwrite cantaloupe, it looks like. What? Until... <laughs> what the hell was that? They'll club you to death for a sandwich. Oh, my God. Well, thanks for spelling it out for me. All right.
So you're afraid of these hobos? Well, of course I am. <laughs> you really think these old hobos from the Depression, you think there's any one of them left? Yeah, there are, there's uh, Kitchener Leslie. What? <laughs> He's an old hobo that's waiting and wait for his time. You'll know all about it. You just wait. Hey. You will literally say anything. <laughs>